Uh, this group is basically all about agorism. It's basically all of us that see there are a lot of problems with the current system, whether that be the government or bank corporations, the banking system, whatever, and we prefer alternatives. We do not seek the political route. That's not for us. Uh, if you want to do that, do that personally, and that's fine. But this group is not about politics. It's about building better alternatives. So we're into things like homesteading, homeschooling, cryptocurrency, 3D printing, self-sufficiency, all that kind of stuff. So different people have different things they're really into and not as much into, but it's all about building self-reliance as a community because we can't all do it all on our own with our family. We need other people, you need a network, and that's what this is. So this is our monthly group. We meet up once a month as a large group. Good time to network, get to know people. Cool. All right, Nicole Sauce. Right? We're just 
four families who were crazy enough to move into the same holler and all decided your family is the family you choose, not the family you're born with, and go with it. That's, that's how we are. So what I wanted to share with you today is that we. But I'm going to tell you about the holler neighbors. A lot of people want to know what is up with the holler neighbors. So I'm Nicole Sauce. I have a podcast called Living Free in Tennessee. If you don't know, check it out. The .com is really easy to find. You can get on your podcast or two. I talk about building the life you choose on your terms because I spent the first three years of my homesteading life subscribed to Southern Living Magazine, freaked out because <laughs> my house didn't look like that. <laughs> and then I realized my house was never going to look like that. And if I kept looking at Southern Living, I'd never get anything done and I'd just feel bad. So I canceled my subscription. <laughs> started throwing them away, looked around my house and said, what do I really want? I have a 1,200 square foot home in the middle of nowhere. If you drive to my place, and I hope you will come to one of our events sometime or one of our open houses and just check it out, you'll be going down the single lane road so what happens if you want to come to comes. Oh no, don't worry, we'll work it out. If they have a trailer, you back up. <laughs> well, number one. They're bigger than you, you back up. If the road's wide enough, you just sort of switch by each other, that's what most people do. But I have a 1,200 square foot home, two bedrooms. It's not big. There used to be two of us there, there now, there's now one of us there. It's not big, it's not a 4,000 square foot mansion, but you know what it is? It's heated by a wood stove. Do you know what that means? Resiliency plus one. Resiliency plus one because I can also heat it with electricity if I need it. Resiliency plus two because I can also heat it with kerosene if I need it. Resiliency plus three because I can also heat it with propane if I need to. But wood. Wood I can always come by even if the truck is just right here. Wood's right out there. It's a little harder to cut down if I can't get you. A lot harder to cut down if I can't get that. So how resilient are we? Luckily, there's a week. My home came with another building on the structure that had plumbing to it, including tied into the septic. So I have a cabin. And that cabin is rented by a fellow called the Tactical Red Band. That's no name. Spoiler alert. Tactical left the military about two and a half years ago and he came to the Holler Homestead because it was the only place that he felt peace. Uh, uh, and he was a combat uh, veteran and has PTSD like you would think <coughs> from his tours in Afghanistan and Iraq. And also he served on the Coast Guard rescuing people and all of that has landed right here. And I don't know if you're aware, how many veterans do we have here? Any? <laughs> That's okay. You guys can work on that. <laughs> They should, they should totally be here. You'll be more resilient with veterans, just saying. Your, your scale will go at least one point. <laughs> veterans Affairs, this is going to be a new splash. They suck at providing support to these guys. They don't know. It's almost as if they want them to commit suicide. Okay, you're out of the military, you're on your own, we have all these services for you, but we have these you got to figure out how to do it. You can't focus anymore because you've got PTSD. Then they have ancillary organizations that help get the services. And then when you get the services, they don't actually give you what you need. Right? Okay. Does that sound like government? Why are we even bothering? And so he came to the hollow. We got him his services, which exist. But he came to the hollow to find peace. And he ended up renting my cabin. And he ended up becoming a really good friend. And he ended up paying his own band psychologist because the VA never will. And within two years, a 10 year alcoholic has taken a really big step. Guess what he did? He gave up alcohol. I see Janet. Janet asked me on the way down is his personality different? Yeah, he can remember stuff. He's not drunk all the time. And he has tools to deal with that trauma. Is he 100%? No. Will he ever be? Probably not. None of us are 100%. But 
but he was able to heal, and that was able to happen through voluntary interaction. Well, before Tactical came, my next door neighbor had a place for rent, and this guy who listens to my podcast named Nighthawk. Spoiler alert, it's not his real name. <laughs> Nighthawk came to visit because we were having this complete solar eclipse. Remember the one where like the glasses were $100 and they were paper? Remember the one? Remember the one packing plates shoved in the drawer in case of the rats again? It's my, it's my. Eclipse glasses saving <laughs> And I was like, hey, I'm at ground zero. It's going to get totally dark in my house. Whoever listens to my podcast, you can just come out. And um, I'm cooking hamburgers on Saturday. You all just need to figure out your food. And what resulted was the biggest, most disorganized, wild, weird, ragey party I've ever had in my life. It was really fun. It also freaked me the hell out. Because there were dangerous things that happened on my property, and I'm like, people are going to get hurt. But they didn't. It all worked out. It also opened my eyes up to, I love doing events. I want to connect the people who know how to plant the things with the people who want to plant. I want to connect the people who know how to milk the goat with the goat. And with the people who want to learn how to milk the goat. I want to connect the people who want to know how to slaughter a turkey with people who show them how to slaughter We've done all of those things since then, and Nighthawk was there and said, hey, Nighthawk. So this event was a little uncomfortable because it was like 140,000 degrees outside, and it's a south-facing slope, and there's absolutely no shade anywhere. So I was going to actually, I don't know, do events here. What would you say I should do? He said, I'd love to start from here, and I'd put the there, and he just put it all together, and I said, we have that place next door to rent. And he moved down. And he got a job. And we built the covered area, and the outhouse is over there. And he is the parking house. <laughs> That's where he is. I'm sorry that my phone is probably talking in the back. <laughs> if that comes, becomes annoying, just bring it up, and I'll turn it off. Well then, the three of us were there, and I'll tell you, it was getting a little duty around my house. Lots of dudes, no chicks. <laughs> you know what that is, right? Lots of dudes, no chicks. And I'm kind of a tomboy, so I didn't make it any better. We're growing food, raising goats. And this really nice lady named Jenny kept coming over. She's like, hey, can I just like come over on a Saturday and hang out? Because I don't have anywhere to go. And she'd come out, and we'd cook together, and we'd have a good time. It turned out, she was in the middle of a really rough place, <coughs> and facing a reality where she needs to raise two boys, mostly on her own. Their father has the kind of job where he's gone all the time. And her budget is about to go to, like, you know, single mom budget. Single mom just got my massage therapy license budget. Two boys in this real estate market. Well, see, this other guy, his name is Jay. He had gone into his bed one day down the road and didn't show up to work one day, turned out to die. And then the house had sat there for two years empty. And one day I looked and the garage door was up and I had to email his, his uh, niece. And I emailed her and I said, I think somebody's broken into your house. With your permission, I'd like to go secure it again because it was 21 degrees outside, the furnace was on, and all the doors were open. Sure enough, somebody broke into the house just to squat. It was trashed. And I said, you know, if you've ever thought about selling it, just let me know. And she said, no, I'm not ready to sell it. So I found her a renter, and they rented for a year, and then a year later, she was ready to sell it. Well, Tactical was there. And I was there, and we thought, well, we'll go have some fun. And we had this rental house, and Jenny needed somewhere to live. Now, normally, I would have charged quite a bit more per month in rent. But I noticed something was happening in the neighborhood at that point. And that was that I call it the unintentional, intentional community. We had three neighbors already, all of whom had different 
strengths and weaknesses, problems and solutions. None of us are completely sane, but we all love each other. We all have each other's best interests at heart. We want to see everybody prosper, and Jenny had become that too. And so we rented the house to Jenny and moved her, and she was able to move six months sooner than she'd be able to move out of a really uncomfortable situation because we were able to link her with this home. And with the advent of Jenny came some organization to the Holler Neighbors that's been really helpful. This is, this is like, I don't want to admit I'm old yet. <laughs> so what started first is we sat down and said, okay, we're flying about the seats of our pants here. Everybody owns their own thing. So the real cool thing that we can do here is if it's on your land, guess who makes the decision? You make the decision if you're on your own land. If it's on somebody else's land and you don't like it, do you make the decision about that? Okay, so we all had a hearty respect for what is none of our business. If the thing on the other land is impacting your land, now what? Oh, hard conversation. So we learned to sit down and have hard conversations. And I can tell you to this day, sometimes we still come back. <laughs> but we keep in mind the big picture. And then we said, okay, well, what are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? What opportunities are out there? And what threats do we see in the world? And by this time, well, that BS that we just talked about at the beginning was happening. All of the reaction to COVID that has been an increase in authoritarianism in our society was going on, and that was what we saw as the biggest threat, and supply chain issues, and the opportunity that we had was that we're pretty good at producing food, and we have the land, and we have the know how And another threat we had was mental health issues. I mentioned the PTSD. Everybody has mental health issues that can address. I've been seeing a psychologist for two years, it's been awesome. You know what she taught me how to do? Wait, I'm going to teach you. <laughs> no. <laughs> do it. No. 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 Right, okay, do it again. No, thank you. No, thank you. See, it could be polite. Boundaries. So we took, we've, been, we've been all addressing these mental health issues. And what has happened is we have really good boundaries. And when people are hurt, or when there's a problem, we have a way to say, hey, we're going to call a family meeting. I want to talk about X, or it hurt my feelings when this happened, or I feel undervalued when you don't listen to my opinion. And we sit down and we talk about it. Do you know who does not love doing that? <laughs> the two men in particular <laughs> don't like doing it. But then it's turned into a joke, right? Where I'll say, hey, so, this weekend, we're going to lasagna mulch to the garden. Tactical, would you like to help? We could do that. Is that redneck or yes or no? <laughs> and then he laughs. Or, he got COVID before I got COVID. And he's sick. And I said, do you want me to do the animals? You know what he said? That would be nice. <laughs> I said, is that my neck or yes? I'm going to take that as a yes because you're sick and I'm going to be nice. So we learn to, to close that loop when it's not clear. And, and that's gotten us really far. And as a result of that, when we put on events, everybody in the Holler Neighbors has a role to play. When we have problems, we address them head on to the best of our ability. Sometimes, like anything, you need, you need a week to think about why you're mad. Right? And that's okay too. But then we set a vision. And we sat down and said, what is really our vision for what we're doing with this community? Do we want to see more holler neighbors? Do we want to, you know, just leave it to the four of us? What is it? How do you become a holler neighbor? Right? And does it go beyond that? Because we have the bigger Living Free in Tennessee network too. And we have sort of inner circle and extended circle of that network, and what I realized was that if we don't have clarity on how that, how the people can come in, 
and we're going to have really awkward things when the wrong people come in. What do you do when the wrong people come in? How do you know they're the wrong people? So as we discussed it, we came up with a vision for the Holler Neighbors that we will work together to empower each other, to prosper in our lives, that we will work together on food producing projects, and that we will connect people from outside the Holler Neighbors with our projects so that they can learn skills and start their own things and compare notes and we can help them start. I mean, there's a Holler Neighbor that started in the back there somewhere, I think, with four families already looking at land together. I heard? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we can help people learn from our mistakes. We can help people get the skill, skills to do basic homesteading or more advanced homesteading. And then most importantly, and this is the thing that makes me inspired to see a group like you, is we can become an underground network. We already are an underground network. What do I mean by underground network? When you think of underground networks, you think of Harriet Tubman and slavery and the Underground Railroad, right? That was an underground network that had a purpose. But there are other underground networks that have happened. You've heard the Frog Spring. This started with basically, a, a, I think it was a music festival. It was creative people got together and were allowed to play music that may or may not have been approved by the government. <laughs> and then the government said, oh, what we do? I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. Oh no, what we do? And they kind of smacked down. But what came out of that was they, the, a group of people started writing newsletters carrying poems that would not be published. And they would hand like, copies on the typewriters to share them. And so your job, if you got this, was take it and take it to your typewriter and, and then you distributed copies and nobody knew who the origin of that newsletter was. That was called Stony Stuff. And that was enough to go and transition from just creative to reporting on what happened factually without any opinion one way or the other. And then it left for borders. And then that's how information was starting to get out to the outside world about what was really happening. And over time, people felt empowered enough that what happened? Well, the wall came down. It wasn't the only thing that made that happen. That was an underground network. And so as you start looking at examples, you look at the French resistance in World War II. How did that happen? People didn't like the Nazis. <laughs> You know why? <laughs> so, when you look at underground networks, what I realize is it's always there. You are already in an underground network. The way you establish trust with people besides being a person like this is what? You do business with them. The easiest way to see can I trust somebody is got some bad attitudes back there. Maybe some of your cheese? Sure, I'll tell you my cheese. I'd rather barter it, but. Well, yeah, I have we barter. That's true, you might have badass coffee back there. So. <laughs> so, I take the cheese home, I eat the cheese, the cheese is good, I don't die. <laughs> What's likely to happen? And now I know somebody makes badass cheese. And I can trust him to make the cheese and have it be a quality product. And then we get to talking as I keep buying cheese, right? That's, that's the foundation of relationships. We start doing business with each other. Well, as authoritarianism rises, which it is obviously doing right now, you know what happens to underground networks that were always there? They too rise. They become more powerful. And we don't need secret handshakes. And we don't need complex way to communicate at this time. We may. And if we get to the point where we do, we will figure that out. We will figure out if we need to embed messages in songs or whatever it is, send pigeons around, have codes, use the book code, whatever. 
if we get to that point where we need that, we'll figure it out. But the best way to have and tap into your underground network is to be with each other, transact with each other, and do projects with each other. And that's the third piece, is the doing projects with each other. I hear people talking about being in Atlanta, you're really excited about the homestead. And I love my homestead, it's a lot of work. And uh, they want to talk about lessons learned. I already had somebody picking my brain back there earlier today about what, what I would do differently. Um, every homesteader will be glad to talk to you about that. They would rather see you not have the first year we're all going to have, no matter when we go to homestead, we have homestead. We can help you have a different first year like that. It would be great. Uh, doing projects together. What came from Paul, our homestead, and from Living Free Tennessee Network, it started by drinking beer around the fire. We'd get together, we'd talk about things. And then being the kinds of people who love to do things, we got a little twitchy. And then we're like, screw it, let's just put it in an aquaponics system at this person's house while drinking beer around the fire. And we started homestead bombing each other. You go, everybody, okay, I'm hosting, I'm cooking, we're gonna do this project. And we found out the thing the Amish has known for a long time. Many hands make life work. And a lot of people see us do these GSD weekends and want to know how do you do that. And I hate to say the answer is super simple. You host your first one. If four people show up, so be it. That's how this group started. You had four people at your first meeting, right? Eight. 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 Look around, guys. Are you a one or a ten? When you were eight, you were like a three, right? Now you're hanging up over here dying. You're like, we got this. When supply chain shut down, are you, are you ready? Are you ready? If the truckers really do the trucker thing, are you ready? What are you gonna do? Well, if you're already buying your beef from, from you know, what's your name? Peter. Peter, you're buying your, your beef from Peter, and you're buying your vegetables from. Chris, we'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you're buying we'll buy it. Uh, If you've already got most of those things covered with each other, do you care? A good friend of mine, Nifi Bali, she like plug on, get out of the grocery store, get out of the grocery store, get out of the grocery store. And everybody, I see people's eyes when she says that, they're like, ah. <laughs> and. The answer is yes, you can like, here's the grocery store, boop, done. You can do that. Most people get out of the grocery store one step at a time. They start with their meat. Your meat's your most important thing. They start with their meat, they figure out how to get a freezer, they figure out how to buy the whole animal, they're like, man, how do I cook that? They figure out how to cook that. First all the steaks are gone, and they're like, man, I guess I got more how to cook. <laughs> and then, Next thing they know, they're like, my whole life is easier. I spend less money on food. I don't like waste a bunch of time at the restaurants. I go out to restaurants when I want to, and my food is better. In fact, I can cook better in the restaurant now, so I don't want to go out. Sorry, that is what happens when you start eating off your car. And then they, they look around and they say, okay, well, I got that covered. What's next? So, no. <coughs> no. No. A weekly gallon of milk. I get a gallon of milk seasonally from goats, and I have almost enough cheese for residual goat milk to, to, to fill my cheese meat. Don't worry, I don't have a cow milk. I don't eat the cow cheddar, that's really good. That's one of my things. But the milk is done. Are you the only one to make cheese like me? Maybe not. Maybe you'll buy cheese. If there's cheese for sale. Then you got dairy cover. Okay, well you got meat and dairy, now what do you got to cover? Snacks. Snacks. <laughs> Just don't snack. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, that's what I want to talk about tonight. We are as resilient as the group we're in. And to me, it doesn't matter philosophically if we're all aligned. 
I'd love to, you guys are not focused on politics and you're, you're focused on solutions. That's awesome. When you push beyond the border of the freedom suffer and into the, we actually might want to be more resilient with supplies or with finding land, you may find that you do well crossing over philosophically into a place where you may not be aligned but you have the same priorities. Some of these here said they're surrounded by Mennonites. Is that you? Yeah. Mennonites are fairly philosophically aligned with us. But, um, you know, there may be differences, and that's okay. I don't care who somebody voted for. What I care about is, do you care about people? Do you see the problem we need to solve? And can we transact together? And can we create better resilience in our community? That's all I care about. If you vote for, for some potent person that I don't like, then whatever. I don't vote, so it doesn't matter. Questions? Do you have something where you're like, I'm not willing to compromise on that? Like, what is your line? In, in, the, in the holler. What do you mean? Like, if, if somebody was wanting to move there? Well, for like a day. So if somebody, here's what I've done in the holler. I have established relationships with all the landowners around me, and I'm first in line to buy. So if you want to move to the holler, I'm first in line to buy. And what we do, because we have the Bigger Living Free Tennessee Network, we get to know people, we have events at the place, we have GSD, which is Get Done Weekends, where we're doing projects together, over that time, we'll get to know somebody well enough to know, do we think they will get along with us in the hall? Um, a big thing for us there is that we are all introverts. And if you're a really social person that needs lots of interaction all the time, you need to get it elsewhere from, than the hall. We'll hang out, like we do hang out, we spend time together, but it's not unusual that I go off by myself in the woods for an afternoon for hikes, and I really just don't want somebody like along, right? Just, I need my fresh time. I love being around people, I love talking to people, but I need a long time, and that's sort of a characteristic that's similar for everybody here. We have one extrovert, though, who's on the approved list to move to the holler. Because, you know what? He has a healthy respect for introverts, and knows how to leave us alone when we're like, and that's one of our things. If you say, hey, can I come over? And I say, now's not a good time. Nobody gets offended. That's one of our things. Very important that that be there in, in our area. Um, if somebody who is a taker moves to the holler, that's not going to happen. That is the thing. You have doers and you have takers. And somebody going through a bad time that needs a little extra help is not a taker, but somebody who is in the victim mindset all the time and always has to be taken care of, and that, that just does not work. And the way you know that is you interact with somebody. If you walk away feeling happy, probably okay. And if I walk away feeling like, oh, <coughs> that's probably going to be somebody who's a taker. And then we will analyze when we're talking about selling property. We'll, We'll sit down, the four of us, and, and talk, you know, like, do we want this person renting there? You know, it's not like I can stop a relationship between other people I don't control, but I can, I can push people I'd prefer to have there in that direction. And that's, that's worked so far. We've had one bad experience, and that person left. I'm usually the one who gets to have that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, then somebody somebody moved in, and their family, um, their spouse was the problem. And yeah, well, it, it just like there, I did. It was before I realized you need to get to know everybody, and it just was a very unhealthy thing to have around. There's a lot going on there, and and they. They ended up moving on somewhere else. Yeah. Well, this silence tells me y'all are ready to talk to each other some more. But you want to do that. That's why you come, right? We must have been talking.
Mostly. Thank you for listening.